What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hacks. Today we're gonna to be doing the long awaited video, the walkthrough of the GeoSump. Now I'm gonna go ahead and break it up into sections here just because I have a feeling I'm gonna uh, be smashing the camera off certain things and it's just gonna be kind of a mess. So we'll start over on the left hand side with the ATO and the uh, module little section there. And then we'll just work our way to the right and I'll show you guys everything that I have here within this sump. So let's go and get started. All right, so the first thing we have here is the 30 gallon ATO reservoir, red, white, and blue, of course, engraved uh, with the GEO logo, as well as the gallons, it's kind of a little bit of a glare there. Uh, this is white acrylic with a clear front. We have two uh, little tops here that we can take off to actually fill it up. Let me go ahead and move that up here. And uh, this is where I put the water in. And as you guys can see there, I have the Neptune Apex ATK pump. Now what I did is I actually took the whole setup, I bought a whole separate one, came with the uh, flow valve, you know the whole setup i basically just use the sensors that you guys will see here in a second in the sump and then just put the pump in here and uh you know use the fmm module uh right there for it so uh works out great like i said 30 gallons last me quite a while and uh perfect for this setup we're going to put that lid on there now you can see back here there are uh, two little uh, uh connections here for the pump and uh, you guys saw the pump on the inside, which comes out to here. I'll show you guys in a second what it looks like when it's filling up and where it fills up in the uh, sump section. And again, it has a little acrylic top here where you can put your pump through, wires and all that kind of stuff, hide it, and keep the evaporation down and keep all that uh, water inside the reservoir. Uh, but that's about it for the ATO reservoir. It works out great. Now, this is just kind of part of the whole setup. And uh, my goal was to make sure that I could fit everything within the sump. So basically it was completely custom sized, nothing else like it. And uh, it's uh, 96 inches long by uh, 22 inches worth of space, space there. And you guys can see exactly how it fits. And uh, it worked out great. So uh, next time we're gonna look at here is the little uh, Apex module setup. We have, it's kind of glary, yep. We have the VDM module, which I'm using for the power heads. We have the WXM for the LEDs, radions, the FMN for the uh, flow valves for the ATO as well as the sensors to see about the reservoir and the uh, flow meter that you guys will see here in a second. Up top we have the uh, PM1 module for the uh, sump there for pH and all that good stuff. Then we have a secondary PM1 module for the uh, calcium reactor which you guys will see in a second. And then of course the controller for uh, the JVO DCS 12000 and the Apex to JVO adapter which is kind of glary. Uh, which uh, they, that uh, BDM connects to. So let's go ahead and move over to the calcium reactor. All right, so the, here we have the calcium reactor. Now I will be doing an in-depth video on how I put this together, set it up, tuned it for this tank. But for now, I'll just give you a quick rundown on it. Now it's a single chamber, holds about 20, 25 pounds of media and I have the Reborn in there. Uh, and then I also have a secondary chamber with finer grain media, which allows it to uh, gas off the CO2 before it goes over to the sump. And you guys will see here in a second where it goes into there. Now, one thing I want to mention is that I did have a Zeo mag, which you guys will notice when I started this in that video that I had Zeo mag in there. I actually swapped out all the media because uh, I ended up getting a high batch of magnesium on my uh, HW Marie mix, and it shot it up over 1,500, which you guys saw on the um, ICP test results. And uh, basically, I went ahead and just swapped out all this media because there's no reason to be adding magnesium when I'm trying to uh, magnesium when I'm trying to get it down. So, uh, either way, uh, this reactor is really sweet. It has a bubble counter uh, built into the side. Can I get the fit? Yep. But uh, the deal is, I actually run the uh, carbon doser, which controls the bubble count. So I don't really, you know, focus on that too much. Um, and then the return line here for the water actually goes on the side of the reactor instead of the top. Most of these models go through the top, but because I wanted this logo we went ahead and uh, put it on the side. Of course, there is a gate valve, which controls the uh, bubble right there. And you guys, again, will see where that's coming through on the sump. And it's ran by a CHA uh, return pump, which I uh, cannot fit. You guys will see that in depth on the uh, other video. But other than that, I really love this calcium reactor. It took me about five or six days to really dial it in. And uh, the, I'll tell you right now, I love calcium reactors. And then, of course, add your uh, minor trace elements to it. It's just a very easy fine tuning um, system, low maintenance as long as you get a good reactor and uh, it just supplies so much to the tank and I really do love it. So let's go ahead and move over to the uh, rest of the sump here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start on the left-hand side here with the uh, return section for the sump. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this cover. This is the filter sock cover, custom uh, USA logo, which is pretty sweet. We're gonna drain the water into there, set this to the side. Now, this uh, section here has four four-inch filter socks with the uh, silencers on it here for the filter socks. And I swap these out twice a week. Usually I kind of wait for them to fill up. Uh, once the water starts getting up around the uh, top of this here, I'll go ahead and uh, 
basically just replace them out. So that's about eight filter socks a week, depending on how much I feed. And of course that comes in through the um, H2 overflow on the customaquariums.com, which then flows down to this first section here and then bubbles up over, or flows up over, down through, and then you could probably see the grate there, the hole, but then goes through into the uh, skimmer section. Uh, I really love this, it's really silent. What's good about it is if I ever forget to take care of the filter socks, these uh, two holes here actually allow the water to flow up and over, and there's been times that I've been gone for several days and I haven't been able to get back here, and the water just flowed over that into uh, the uh, skimmer section without any worries of it overflowing. I have two massive uh, gate valves here, or sorry, ball valves, and I just dial those down enough to make the make it somewhat silent and uh, a good flow rate. So right now it's about 2,300 gallons per hour going uh, through this return section or this sump, um, and uh, works out great. So let's go and move over to the skimmer section. All right, so moving on to the skimmer section here, we have a NIOS Quantum 300 uh, protein skimmer. I love this thing. It's the best skimmer I've ever owned, and it better be for the price. I uh, I absolutely love it. It works so good, and honestly, I think it works too good, and that's probably part of the reason why I'm having a low uh, phosphate levels. But uh, we're working on that with overfeeding. Uh, anyways, I also have a marine pier block in here, which is the eight by eight by four inch marine pier block, and it's on a custom rack that uh, Geo built for me. And uh, as I mentioned in the ICP test, that if the aluminum goes up, I'll probably end up taking this uh, marine pier block out. But we'll kind of see when we do the test here in a couple months. Now on the back wall there, I have uh, it's a holder for the um, heaters. Now these are two titanium 500 watt heaters and uh, they work out awesome. Uh, the name brand is kind of uh, escaping right now. I'll put it on the screen, I don't know why I forgot. But either way, I love those heaters and they work out great. Uh, if you can see in the back here, we have a little bit of a probe holder. Now this is gonna hold my pH and temperature probe for the apex. And of course the water flows just underneath it uh, from the return section and of course you get an accurate uh, temperature and pH reading through that. Um, I really love uh, this section because everything's kind of closed off. Uh, one thing in particular is that uh, it has this little uh, blue gate you can say is that. Basically you can bring it up and down to adjust the water inside the skimmer section. Of course you can uh, get different types of skimmers and uh, adjust it to be the perfect height and then you don't have to always accept just one type of skimmer. Uh, also we're going to move on over here. The water will flow over and down through this uh, foam pad here which I clean out every other week and that's just to get just in case anything does escape through the filter socks it can just get picked up the detritus wise and uh, it works out great I like having that again you got to clean it out every couple weeks just to make sure uh, nothing gets built up on it and doesn't become a nutrient sink uh, let's go ahead and move over to the reactor and return section and then over to the refugium all right, so when it comes to the return section, we're gonna start with the pump and then work our way through the manifold. Right now I'm using a Jabo DCS 12,000 return pump. It's about 3,200 gallons per hour. Again, 2,300 gallons of that is going to the main display and the rest of it's going through uh, the refugium and the two reactors as well as the UV sterilizer. Uh, moving on to the reactors here, uh, we have them coming up, the return pump coming up and then teeing off here. And each one of these hoses, which you can disconnect through, or through the union, goes down to a reactor pumps down through, which is, this one's the GFO, uh, pumps up through and then out uh, down into that uh, little bubble trap section there and then back through the tank. Now when you are actually uh, trying to drain off the GFO and the carbon, you can go ahead and use this little valve here with a half inch hose and drain off all the excess uh, just like you would with a regular BRS dual reactor. Uh, over here we have the same setup but for uh, carbon and it works out great. It has a little plate on the inside of there. I will show you guys in depth on these reactors down the road, how I take them apart, clean them, and use them specifically for both GFO and carbon. Now you can actually use this for bio pellets, GFO, carbon, any other media that you want to use. It comes with different parts and fittings to allow you to use it for whatever media. Again, same feature where it will actually um, drain in, down through, same setup, okay? All right, the next feature we have here, which is gonna be pretty cool when I start dosing with my dosing pumps for trace elements, all that good stuff, is the tube holder. Actually, the tubes can come through the acrylic down to this little holder and be held into place, which works out great. Now, you can also see that there are cable management slots into the sump, and I actually have my return line from my uh, UV sterilizer going in there. Uh, basically, just holds it perfectly in place, so it just worked out great. Um, also, if you guys see, there's another pump in there. That's actually the CHA feed pump for the calcium reactor, and it's in a perfect spot. It comes up through this little fitting. Hopefully, you guys can see it the fitting and then all the way over to the calcium reactor and uh, I just love that setup it just is perfect uh, moving down here you, as I mentioned I have the uh, float valve sensors here or basically yeah, sensors for the ATO then we have our low one here 
our uh, higher level here for the warning and then you can adjust those through the acrylic rod that's actually in place there and you can adjust them whatever level you want them to be at uh, in the return section. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to the refugium and then the UV sterilizer. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the refugium here. Uh, starting from the return section, we have it teeing off to a, a ball valve there, black tube, just like the other reactors. Then it comes down to this pipe and into the reservoir. Now what happens is it's going to do its thing with the macroalgae, come through, go through this bulkhead, and then if you guys can see right in here, there's a little bit of an overflow box. Hopefully you guys can see that. And uh, what happens is the water will flow down through that and then basically fall in slowly into the return sections, not calling any, causing any bubbles and allowing it to just kind of smoothly transition back into the return section, not having any uh, micro bubbles. So that works out great. Now there's very, basically no macroalgae in here. I went ahead and I posted it for sale on my website and I just got cleaned out. So I gotta wait for it to grow back before I could sell it to you. Now there's a ton of it in the frag system, but I don't sell it from the frag system. I specifically sell it from the 300 because uh, I know it's perfect in every single way. Uh, so we're gonna have to wait for that to come back before you guys can uh, get that again. Now this refugium is powered by by Reef Bright LED strips here, and they are the uh, multicolored ones. They're basically the 3K and the 6K um, LEDs, and I'll tell you right now, these things rock. I, what I want to do down the road is I will compare these. I'll basically swap them out for the Kessel 380, and we'll see the difference between these and that on this same refugium, but that'll probably be uh, several months down the road. But for right now, I love these Reef Bright LEDs. Uh, I've never had a refugium light work this well. I think it works so well between not having enough nutrients in the tank. It just grows the macroalgae so quickly, and uh, I don't know if it could keep up, honestly. The macroalgae is just fading on me. And again, I know it's because of the lack of nutrients, and we are working on that. Now, one cool feature about this uh, refugium that is just awesome is that my uh, calcium reactor actually comes over here and drips into uh, this uh, chamber here which brings all that CO2 through the refugium allowing it to be gassed off with the macroalgae they can use that to grow and then it will go back into the return section and get into the tank I just really love that concept concept and uh, Geo just did it right when they uh, decided to have the calcium reactor go directly into the refugium and uh, yes yeah, so let's go ahead and move over to the last part of this and that is the UV sterilizer alright so the last thing we have here is the JBO 55 watt UV sterilizer it was uh, relatively cheap. I think I got it for like $75 or something. And uh, it works out pretty good. Uh, it made a big difference on the tank when I was first getting it up and running. Had a small, small bacteria bloom, but it took care of that within a couple days. And uh, yeah, basically it was really easy to connect. I went ahead and took the extra fitting here on the uh, manifold, plumbed it through the wall with a ball valve. It goes down through the bottom, connects and goes up through the top, the water. And then of course that drains back into the sump. Well guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, I really love this setup. I imagine you guys can probably already figure that out based on my voice and how I talk about it. Um, this is my dream build. This 300 gallon is everything that I've ever wanted, put it into one, and um, I worked very hard. And thanks to you guys and your support when I broke down the 125 and I sold all that coral, uh, and then the sponsorships between customaquariums.com and Geo's Reef. You guys, everybody came together and gave me the build of my dreams so I, I can't thank you guys enough and um, I like I mentioned guys I will be doing more in-depth videos on the calcium reactor uh, the co2 regulator as well as the skimmer and and the um, carbon and GFO reactor all that kind of stuff you guys will see more in depth when we clean them out do maintenance and all that good stuff so either way I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions about this setup uh, please let me know also go check out geosreef.com he has a lot of stuff on his website and uh, we will be doing more uh, equipment uh, related builds with him I'm also going to be working with Geo's Reef when we set up the reef tanks for veterans I plan on going that route down the road getting some of his sumps and setups for those builds because uh, we're going to start small and then we're going to work our way up to bigger and better things and that's just kind of how uh, we work within this hobby. So either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later. Peace.